Hand 16. Fingers don't have major muscles. These strong cords in them are moved by the muscles of the palm and forearm. Jonathan. What are tendons? Correct. What is tendon? I've always wanted them to ask that on Jeopardy. And here we are. What is tendon? Tendon also has a force re length relationship. And I'm plotting that here. So again, as typical, we have tendon force versus tendon length. And tendon, like muscle, is also a spring. So what do springs do? As you stretch them, the length gets longer, the force goes up. In tendon, we have this toe region here and a linear region here. Of course, if you stretch tendon too long, it breaks. So why do we have this toe region? If you think about stretching of tendon, what happens is when you first start to stretch it at these short lengths, most of the little fibrils within tendon are slack. But then once they, you stretch it beyond that length, the tendon slack length, you start to get into this linear region where all of the fibrils within tendon are generating force. When we're getting to this region right here and we're rolling over, the tendon is starting to yield and then finally it breaks here. So tendon has a nonlinear force length relationship. Sometimes we just linearize that so we can think of tendon as a simple spring. But in most cases in, in class and in the open sim exercises, we'll be thinking of tendon as this nonlinear spring. Now, bringing it all together into this hill type model of muscle and tendon, what you can see is this. The, we have a tendon force length curve here, force versus length. That's representing the tendon spring here. We have muscle that has an active and passive force length curve. So here we are, the muscle tendon force length curve, active, the passive muscle force length curve, and a muscle also has this force velocity relationship we talked about as well. So here's velocity, here's force, here's shortening muscle, here's lengthening muscle. And what we really need to take into account when we build engineering models of muscle is all of these factors. The length, the velocity of muscle that are gonna have a dramatic influence on muscle force and the series elasticity provided by tendon. So what we're going to do next time is really dive in into the detail. I promised at the beginning that the math represents the biology pretty well. And so we have the mathematical framework here to begin to make computations on the biology. So in next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to model these muscle and tendon. And to model generic muscle tendon and to scale it to a specific actuator, we need four generic curves. Here they are. You'll get very used to them. The tendon force length curve, active force length curve of muscle, passive force length curve of muscle, and the force velocity curve of muscle. All muscles have that feature, and then we're going to scale that generic model to represent any muscle. It could be a muscle in the hand, muscle in the wrist, muscle in the leg. It's really powerful. We can take this generic model and scale it based on five parameters. What are those five parameters? Here they are listed. The peak isometric force, that is how much force you get when the muscle is at its optimal length and maximally excited. The optimal fiber length, that's the length at which it occurs. So those are the two parameters that scale the force length curve. The tendon slack length, that's the length at which tendon starts to develop force. The V max, the maximum contraction velocity here, and the pination angle. We'll talk more about that in next lecture, but that's the angle that the muscle fibers make with the tendon. Really powerful model. We'll get into the details in the next lecture. See you there.